Hello, everybody. Welcome and good afternoon. I'm Cheryl Reynolds with the UC Statewide IPM program. Welcome to today's UC Ag Expert Talk on understanding effective citrus spray application through computer simulations. Peter Cusina is here with me and he's gonna be running our polls and doing some troubleshooting. And so now I'd like to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Peter Ako Larby is an assistant cooperative extension at the Kearney Agricultural Research and Extension Center. He's specializing in agricultural application engineering. And today he's speaking on understanding effective citrus spray application through computer simulation. And so now I'm gonna pass this over to Peter. So hello, Peter, and you can go ahead and share your slides. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for your participation in this webinar. Um, I'm excited to uh, present um, this webinar on understanding effective citrus spray application through computer simulation. Um, let me begin by giving you just a quick overview of my, my program. I have been in my position as Assistant Cooperative Extension Specialist for about a year now. My responsibility is to provide regional leadership in the area of agricultural engineering extension and applied research with a focus on spray application engineering. As my primary goal, I seek to improve agricultural productivity while producing the impact while reducing the impact of pesticides and other agricultural chemicals on the environment. There are five um, themes that guide my program, which are one, evaluating spray application techniques, um, testing commercial spray application technologies, promoting best practices for safe, economical, and environmentally sound pesticide spray application, developing overall spray application technologies, and deploying spray, appli spray application decision support systems. Now, my uh, program website is still under construction and will provide more information on these um, themes. At the San Joaquin Valley area of California, um, where my program is um, headquartered, is a, a major production region for almond, uh, pistachio, stone fruits, citrus, and grapes and also where air blast sprayers are the main types of sprayers um, used to apply uh, pesticides. For effective and economical uh, pest control, it is um, critical to achieve high on-target deposition and coverage, but this can be very challenging and costly due to variability in tree characteristics, sometimes within the same orchard. One way by which we can um, improve air blast spray application is really by um, understanding how it works. Here is a conventional air blast sprayer with typical polar um, jet design. By, by its name, an air blast sprayer simply blasts out a mixture of air and liquid in the form of um, tiny droplets. Um, they, the high volume, high velocity air serves as a vehicle to transport droplets. And we may refer to this mixture of air and liquid as a spray cloud. So here is a, an air blast sprayer, a stationary air blast sprayer that is uh, blasting out some spray cloud. Um, and there is an air tank um, blocking the view so you cannot see the outlet, but you can use this as a um, the idea, there is an air outlet and also there are nozzles lined up that uh, spray the, the, um, the tank liquid. So we can see how far and high the spray cloud um, is traveling. And now if I were to place a tree in the path of the spray cloud, part of the, the spray would be captured by the tree canopy. And this tree canopy would be my, my target tree. And I would be interested in knowing how much of the spray the canopy captures. Here are some basics of the application process. A uh, bulk tank mix liquid is, um, is atomized or is turned into uh, tiny droplets by a process of atomization. 
uh, while exiting um, nozzles, which are under pressure in. Now, um, the air transports the spray droplets um, towards the tree canopy, which is the, the target tree canopy. And uh, the tree captures part of the, the, um, the spray leading to uh, canopy deposition, which is our, our desired outcome from the application. Uh, part of the spray is also, uh, that makes the, the canopy drifts beyond the, the canopy, and part of it would also deposit on, on the ground, either directly or indirectly um, through runoff from, from leaves. Now, by maximizing uh, canopy deposition, we minimize drift and ground deposition. Atomization produces spray consisting of droplets um, that have uh, different sizes. Um, the factors that affect the droplet size are physical properties of the tank solution, such as um, density and viscosity. Also, we have a nozzle design and operating pressure. As a spray cloud moves, um, there is an influence of weather factors. For instance, a high temperature combined with a, a low relative humidity hastens droplet evaporation to favor spray drift. We already know um, of the effect of high winds that also favor spray drift. At this point, um, I would pause for um, our polls. Um, three questions. So the first question is, which of the following is true about air blast sprays? The second one is, at any instance during an, uh, an air blast spray application, which of the following defines the, the target trees? And then the last, um, the third one is which of the following is the desired outcome of an air blast spray application. Okay, we're gonna be closing out this poll and then um, you should be seeing the results screen. Okay. So I think most of you, most of you got the um, one, two, and three um, correct. Um, the correct answer is uh, C uh, for the uh, question one, and then it's uh, B for question two, and then that is, um, that is A for question three. Okay. The amount of uh, spray that deposits on the, the tree canopy, uh, what we call um, the on-target deposition is often lower than we desire. And this is because of the complex interaction uh, between these factors. We have equipment design, application parameters, spray fiscal properties, tree characteristics, and weather condition. A research showed that for 100% um, of material sprayed in citrus applications, only about 73 to 80% deposits on the canopy, um, 64% percent, 6 to 14 percent potentially drift away from the application area and um, 9 to 20 fall to the ground. However, these estimates were based on limited research data and may not apply to the diverse situations uh, that may prevail during an application. So the question remained, how can we estimate um, these values, that is the canopy deposition, the potential drift, and potential um, ground uh, fallout or ground deposition. How can we estimate these values uh, for, the, for planning and evaluation purposes for the wide range of situations that could exist, um, such as um, different, different um, tree characteristics, have uh, different orchard conditions, 
right combination of uh, application parameters and a host of weather parameters. You and I know that um, field experiments present major limitations in terms of time, labor, material, and other resources. Nonetheless, computer modeling and simulation can help us uh, overcome these limitations at a low cost. So this was part of my uh, motivation for my PhD work some eight years ago in which I developed a model to predict spray deposition in citrus application. Now by model, I do not mean any of these or their likes, but I mean a bunch of, of mathematical formulas describing the various processes occurring in the spray cloud from when it is generated to beyond the target tree canopy. So here in the top left is uh, what we call the Forrester diagram of the spray system, which shows um, different processes happening concurrently within the spray cloud as it disperses along. Next year um, is a conceptualization of the spray cloud where it's partitioned where it, where it's partitioned into um, compartments of equal thickness. And each compartment is characterized by um, a cross-sectional area, a volume, and then an um, air velocity. And in this plot, this plot shows an increasing uh, cross-sectional area with corresponding decrease in uh, air velocity as a spray cloud moves away from the sprayer outlet. We see that the air velocity drops sharply as it exits the sprayer outlet and then uh, gradually um, decreases uh, further away from the sprayer. For the simulation, the spray generated was grouped into um, 10 categories from extremely fine to extremely coarse. And I consider the droplet evaporation um, occurring um, over uh, the compartments and then also over time. So uh, finally, here is the um, is a schematic representation of spray compartments outside of the canopy and then inside of the canopy. Uh, you can see the various uh, processes occurring within each compartment and uh, from which uh, the model equations were formulated. So we have an equation for the uh, compartments outside the canopy and uh, equation for the compartment inside the canopy. This was what was solved by simulation to generate a spray um, outcome. Here are some simulation results. Uh, first is the sprayer air, out, uh, air velocity for different rated air flow rates. We see that the air velocity generally, um, the air velocity generally increases with increasing air flow rate. Now next year shows droplet size spectrum for sprays from different nozzle sizes. These are the nozzle sizes by their colors. Our sprays can be characterized by volume median diameter, which is the, um, the droplet size at which half of the, the spray volume is made up of droplets um, smaller than that size and half is made up of droplets larger than that size. So volume median diameter VMDs are depicted here in the drop down lines and they summarize in this table for the different nozzle sizes. At the bottom here, we see the effect of operating 
pressure, uh, operating pressure on droplet size from a single nozzle. Um, increasing pressure decreases droplet size. We can see how it's, how it's uh, depicted here. Um, this shows a, a clearer picture of how the droplet size decreases with increasing um, operating pressure. Here on the right is a simula simulation of droplet evaporation over time. So each of these lines represent um, different droplet size. We see the changing droplet sizes with um, over time with the smallest uh, droplet size evaporating out of the spray faster. Um, and the, and the, um, the next size would follow suit as a um, elapsed time continues to increase. Down here um, shows a changing uh, percentage um, of active ingredient as the water evaporates out of the, of the droplets. We can see how quickly the concentration um, or percentage of uh, active ingredient changes based on the droplet size. Now let us look at the effect of weather on the airborne spray mass as it moves away from the, from the sprayer outlet. We, we have here um, air temperature, relative humidity, uh, wind speed, and wind, velocity, uh, wind direction, sorry. Now in, in brief, at any given um, distance away from the sprayer, the airborne spray mass decreases with increasing uh, temperature and also decreases with um, decreasing relative humidity and then um, decreasing, so increasing uh, wind speed and then also um, increasing uh, wind direction where 90 uh, degrees represents a uh, right angle cross wind or the spray, uh, spray cloud um, direction. All right, let's look at a um, couple of uh, poll questions. The first one is, which of the following reasons incorrectly justifies the need for or use of model simulations? The second is, which of the following weather conditions should be avoided because of its effect on spray application? Okay, I think we're going to bring up the results now. Okay. All right, I think uh, it shows that many uh, of you, I mean, 64% got it right, got the first one right, and 93% got um, the second one right. So they, um, many of you are, are, are scoring these poll questions uh, well. The first one, for the first one, the correct answer is C. Model simulations can create cool graphs that cannot be created with, an act, with actual field experiments. That's really not what we, that, uh, what we aim at by using model, model simulations. Um, and um, for question, the second question to is C, high wind speed uh, because it favors spray drift. So you want to avoid high wind speeds um, um, at all costs um, to uh, improve your spray um, application. All right, let's carry on. So now in order to build confidence in the model, um, I validated um, the model with two field experiments. One for um, dispersion, that is just looking at the spray cloud um, dispersing from, the, uh, from the, the sprayer outlet away from the sprayer outlet. And then the second test um, looked at um, the spray cloud interaction with the, uh, the canopy to result in um, deposition. 
this was done in a commercial orchard. Here are some results. Um, the markers um, are the field data and the lines are the model simulations. Without going too much into details, the uh, modeling efficiency was 78% um, for dispersion and 61% uh, for deposition, which were, were considered very good for such a complex model. So um, I pushed further to develop an expert system with a graphical user interface to answer the outstanding questions how much spray deposits on the canopy, how much spray potentially drifts, and how much spray um, falls to the ground or deposits on the ground. And I call that um, expert system, uh, Citrus Spray X. So um, here is a structure of the expert system with the arrows showing the direction of information flow. It consists of a knowledge base and an advice, uh, an advice model, model um, both based on technical literature, which includes expert, um, direct expert knowledge. The inference model uh, receives input from a user uh, through the graphical user interface, interacts with the knowledge base and advice model um, running the, um, the spray model as necessary, and then returns um, some results to the user. Here is the, the simplified flowchart of the spray evaluation simulation, the part that runs the model. And here is a graphical user interface for the, sim the evaluation simulation uh, part of the um, expert system. User inputs um, mainly consist of uh, application parameters, um, tree characteristics, um, orchard condition, and weather parameters. And the, the outputs are canopy deposition, ground fallout, and uh, potential spray drift. All, of, all in percentages. Um, there is also a what if pane, which tells the user what changed from a previous run and how it affected the, um, the output. And below here is the results of evaluating the expert system. But here is one quick uh, poll question to answer says validating a model with data from an actual field experiment gives us some confidence to trust the model's predictions or make decisions based on it. True or false? I think we have most people responding, so the results should be coming up. Okay. Thank you very much for, for the response. I think we all agree. 100% um, responded um, correctly. So we we'll, would we'll move on. So um, now let's look, uh, use the expert system to um, learn something about different variables. Without getting into uh, the simulation setup, I will dwell on changes in the variable in question and how it affects the, the output. So let's begin with airflow rate. Apart from transporting the spray droplets, the air helps in penetrating the tree canopy. Now, this is what we, this is what we see when we change the airflow rate from 19,000 CFM to 35,000 CFM and then to 48,000 CFM. Canopy deposition um, increased, for, increased from 45 percent to 61 percent and then to 62 percent with some increase in ground uh, fallout while uh, spray drift uh, reduced from 48 
percent to 28 percent. Um, please take note that these are percentages of the total uh, volume applied as shown in the table above. Um, in subsequent uh, slides, um, changes in, in the volume applied will be highlighted. So please take note of that as we move on. So how about um, nozzle size? We know that increasing nozzle size, that is uh, increasing nozzle size, increases the volume of spray being discharged, as you can see here, and, um, and the, the droplet size. So both the, the, the spray volume and the droplet size increase by increasing um, the nozzle size. We, we learn here that uh, increasing nozzle um, size from D313, and these are disc core nozzle, D313 to um, D423, and then to D525, uh, increased, uh, increased and then decreased the uh, position as in percentage. Look at the uh, total volume applied here to better appreciate these percentages. So um, increased and decreased um, the, uh, canopy deposition as in percentage. And we can see that there is a trade-off here uh, between drift and uh, ground fallout. Um, drift, drift decreases from 34% uh, to 21% while ground fallout increases. Um, and this would probably uh, most likely be um, uh, due to um, spray runoff from, from leaks as the, um, the spray volume increases. How about operating pressure? Increasing operating pressure also increases the volume of spray being discharged, but tends to decrease droplet size. Here we learn that increasing operating pressure from 115 PSI to 175 PSI decreases the percentage deposition in favor of spray drift. Um, let's take this whole question. According to model simulation results from preceding slides, which of the following general, general statements about citrus air blast spray application is true? Oh, okay. We had a, a few uh, misses here. I mean, quite a few here. Um, so uh, according to uh, model simulation results from preceding slides, which of the following general statements about citrus air blast spray application is true. We have increasing airflow rate increases percentage canopy deposition. Uh, we found that to be um, true um, in the preceding slides. So the correct answer is A. Um, increasing nozzle size increases percentage deposition and uh, percentage potential spray drift um, is, um, is false um, from the pre previous slide. Spray drift um, actually um, decreased in favor of, um, in favor of uh, ground, uh, ground fallout. So. All right, let's move on. Let's look at um, a few more variables. Let's look at ground speed. You probably know that generally increasing ground speed, um, increasing ground speed decreases application rate. That is your GPA. Here we, we also learn that increasing ground speed increases percentage canopy, uh, sorry, percentage canopy deposition at the expense of ground uh, fallout and spread rate. And you need to bear in mind that the volume, the gallons, the total um, gallons being applied is reducing, but 
there is an increase in the percentage deposition and um, the um, and there is an, a decrease in uh, potential uh, spray drift and also ground fallout. How about canopy density? That is the canopy foliage density. How does this affect the application outcome? Um, here there is no change in volume applied, so we are just looking purely at the uh, the effect of um, canopy deposition, uh, sorry, uh, canopy foliage density. So having more, more, more leaves um, in the same canopy volume increases spread inter, uh, interception leading to increased canopy deposition at the expense of spread rate. Although there is potentially some increase in ground fallout which would occur um, as a result of um, some runoff from leaves. Okay, now let's look at, um, talk about weather. How do high, higher relative humidity values affect the outcome? We learn here that increasing relative humidity um, increases um, percentage deposition. So increasing relative humidity from 60 to 90% increases percentage deposition from 56 to 66%. And be, uh, because there is low droplet evaporation as a result of um, increasing the uh, relative humidity spray drift surface in this case. So finally, let's look at wind speed. Um, this is looking at cross winds. That is a wind occurring 90 uh, 90 degrees from the um, 90 degrees from 90 degrees to the direction of the spray cloud. So we see here that increasing uh, wind speed actually reduces the canopy deposition in favor of spray drift. Um, so this is this just emphasizes uh, what we know about. Uh, the effect of wind speed and the crosswinds just represents um, the worst case scenario. Let's look at this, this poll question. According to model simulation results from uh, preceding slides, which of the following general statements about citrus ebla spray application is true? That is from the few uh, preceding slides. And um, while they're answering, uh, there was a question that came in for you, if I can ask you that. Okay, I can try okay, to. So, so in the model simulation, does drift eventually become ground deposition, but not measured in the simulation as such? So um, in other words, does ground deposition mean that pesticide hits the ground in the adjacent row? If I understand your, your que the question correctly, will the, the drift um, beyond uh, the canopy, the target canopy, will it eventually um, land on the ground or land on the, on the adjacent rows? Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yes. Um, this um, drift here is potential drift, so it's, um, it's a, a evaluated um, just at the um, at the at the exit point of the of the target canopy, so it's not looking at where it potentially falls, but in reality, um, part of part of that spray could end up on adjacent rolls. Um, while you know a majority may all depending on the conditions in the field, uh, part of it would also drift away from the. Um, the application site altogether, but we it is it is really um, difficult um, to some extent to um, evaluate 
um, where the spray actually results in beyond the target. So best practice um, would be to uh, keep the spray within, I mean, up to the, the target canopy, if possible. Work within the, the, can, the target canopy because there is uncertainty in whatever misses the target. Okay, thank you. And um, I th Peter has just brought up the results. Okay. Uh, from that yes. other poll. Yeah, I think a majority of you um, uh, responded correctly, uh, which is um, increasing, uh, according to the model simulation results from uh, preceding slide, which are the following general statements about citrus, air blast spray application is true. Um, A is the answer, increasing uh, sprayer ground speed increases percentage canopy deposition. That is a, a correct answer from the simulation results. Okay, let's let's move on quickly. I think um, I'm falling a little behind um, schedule. I'll, I'll bring up um, some other applications that we have used as the uh, the model to to um, address, and um, think this would be useful for our purposes here. So we have used a, the simulation runs from this expert system to test some advanced. Um, air blast spray systems to determine the benefits for not just uh, spray material savings, but also the position savings. And we focused on four um, advanced concepts. One is automatic um, nozzle rate adjustment, or that's not nozzle flow um, adjustment, um, automatic air assistance control, automatic application rate control, um, and an automatic nozzle um, on off, which is shutting nozzles um, off when they are not needed. Um, and these, the physical manifestations of um, these concepts take different forms. Um, here are some, the default um, settings we consider for the simulation and for lack of time, I would not go, um, I will not delve much in, into, into this, but I just want to show you how these compare so um, here is the here is the um, are the configurations of the different spray concepts for different tree sizes. We considered three um, different tree sizes: a small size, a medium size, and a large size, and also um, three different foliage densities: um, low, medium, and high. The um, conventional application uh, was uh, com configured to um, the large, the large uh, tree and applied uh, 68 gallons per acre for all tree sizes. The airflow rate was set to uh, 38,000 uh, uh, CFM. Um, the automatic nozzle rate um, adjustment system was configured to apply a 44% nozzle rate for small trees and a 62% uh, percent nozzle rate for um, medium trees yielding 20 gallons per acre and 34 gallons per acre uh, respectively, but using the same airflow rate as a conventional application. The automatic air assistance control um, of this particular one, uh, varied the, the air assistance uh, amount for a small size uh, trees. So and we can see um, 18,000 CFM for small size trees, 28,000 CFM for uh, medium sized trees. And then the automatic application rate control um, was tested within uh, two, uh, with, within 10% uh, Ten percent offset from the desired um, uh, the desired uh, speed of uh, two miles per per hour. So the same the same uh, application rate was achieved um, due to correction of this uh, correction by this particular system. Slower speeds were corrected uh, by reducing uh, pressure and thereby reducing volume. Larger um, 
faster speeds were also corrected by increasing pressure to increase the volume to match the desired application rate. And for the last um, system automatic nozzle on off uh, control, the, um, the sprayer was uh, configured to uh, use different, um, different configurations of nozzles for the small size trees and the uh, medium size trees yielding uh, 16 gallons per acre uh, and 40 gallons per acre um, for, the, for the small and medium sized trees. And then we, here is the configuration, uh, the tree configurations used. We have three um, uniform configurations and we had three non-uniform configurations combined with, um, with three um, foliage densities. And you can see a depiction of it. Um, percentage small trees, percentage uh, medium trees, and percentage large trees. So you can see how these compare visually. And then um, for data analysis, we focus on just the deposition, the canopy deposition, and ignore the other, um, the, the losses, which is um, ground fallout and spray drift. Um, we, for comparison, uh, among the various treatments, we looked at volume applied per um, number of trees to uh, if as spray rate and a volume deposited divided by number of trees as um, deposition rate. And spray savings as a deficit volume sprayed compared to corresponding conventional um, air blast application where um, uh, these advanced systems are not being used. And then also the position savings where uh, was um, evaluated as uh, supp supplementary, that is additional deposition um, gain compared to corresponding uh, conventional blast uh, application. And so total savings combined the two savings in this case. You know, so here are some um, results here. The, the same volume of spray was applied for co the conventional spray uh, application. Uh, per ground area, but we found that the spray rate increased with uh, percent missing trees and also decreased with uh, increasing travel speed. So increasing percent uh, missing trees and decreasing uh, the travel speed led to negative uh, spray savings um, in each of uh, these cases that were tested uh, for the conventional application. We found that the deposition rate was limited to uh, was limited uh, by the canopy size and also foliage density. And then compared to the uniform, uniform um, large tree uh, with high foliage density, the position savings also varied with tree configuration, but were all negative. Also the position uh, rate and, and the position savings reduced with um, increasing travel speed. Um, this establishes a need for variable rate techniques. Uh, for the automatic nozzle rate adjustment, only nozzle rate was adjusted, but not a nozzle configuration. Um, so 10 nozzles per side were, were used for all the tree sizes. So spray rates uh, varied with um, tree size, but reduced, um, but the, the reduced nozzle rate led to reduced um, canopy um, deposition rates and then also negative uh, deposition savings. Um, for the automatic air assistance control system, only air volume was adjusted but not nozzle rate or nozzle configuration. So there was no spray savings but the reduced air led to reduced deposition rates and negative um, deposition savings compared to conventional application. For the automatic application rate control system, application rate was maintained uh, at a conventional rate leading to positive uh, spray savings at lower speeds and negative savings at high speed, but this is actually an adjustment, so it may not necessarily be viewed as um, negative savings. Um, the position rate was fairly adjusted um, in this treatment, although there's, there was still some deficit at high speeds um, than the target um, speed. For the automatic nozzle on-off control system, 
only um, nozzle configuration was matched to uh, three sides and no spray um, was discharged um, in uh, three gaps. So there was no um, deposition savings per se, but um, there was uh, much savings in, in, the, in uh, the spray rate. So overall, this is how it looks. Um, automatic nozzle on-off control systems seem to give the highest benefit, followed by, um, followed by uh, automatic nozzle flow control system, and then the automatic um, application rate control system. The air assistance control system did not show any benefit, largely due to the great distance of the canopy from the, um, the sprayer's outlet. Um, so uh, what, one thing we can glean from, from this is that smart sprayers um, can benefit from um, combining multiple concepts to optimize both spray um, savings and the position savings for um, this economy. Um, let's look at this uh, quick poll questions as the last poll questions, and then we will round up. From simulation results in earlier slides, which are the following advanced systems, uh, which of the following advanced systems may benefit um, in terms of material savings? Uh, spraying an orchard having uniform foliage density hedge rolls, that is uh, three canopies touching and um, also trimmed at the, the top and sides. And then the second, second question says, in an orchard with variable tree sizes, uh, uniform canopy gaps and uh, possible missing trees, which of the following advanced systems may provide the greatest benefit in terms of material savings? Okay, just a few more seconds and we'll bring up the results panel. Okay. I know this particular one was a bit tricky um, because you need to read, um, you need to read um, uh, carefully to, to pick the, the answers. And uh, for the first one, the, the correct answer is B. That's an enabler sphere with um, automatic application rate control in this case, because you have uniform uh, foliage density and you also have uh, a uniform uh, tree size and all that. So none of these um, would, would benefit greatly. The others will not benefit greatly. Okay. And then the second, for the second one, the correct answer is C. Um, an air blast prayer with um, automatic nozzle on off control based on the presence and absence of uh, trees because you, you, you have possibly have some missing trees and they also have gaps between trees. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so some take home uh, messages here. We know that guesstimating the um, outcome of an application, an air blast spray application, that is in terms of um, canopy deposition, drift and ground fallout, is almost impossible because of all the, um, the uh, complex interactions. Using uh, modeling and simulation tools for predictions can improve decision making for better planning. And in this presentation, um, I have shown that um, the Citrus Spray X Expert System, which was used in all these simulations, or similar tools can help um, a decision, uh, so provide decision support in, uh, for these purposes. And I would want to quickly end, I'm sorry I've, I've used up all the time, um, but I really wanted to um, show you, give, uh, show you um, this um, upcoming opportunity um, because I think, um, especially for growers and applicators, um, this could be uh, something that would, would benefit you. Um, we have um, a, a project that is um, being funded by uh, DPR. Um, it's, it's just about to, to begin. Uh, it's a two-year project, and um, this would uh, be uh, evaluating the, the expert system by end users. Um, we would have um, a project uh, website uh, providing information, uh, providing uh, installation and tut tutorials and, and a host of um, other information. We'll be having workshops, hands-on calibration trainings and field days. Um, I would want just to throw it out there. So if, if you um, seem to be interested, um, I would, um, I would uh, work through the organizers of this um, webinar 
to uh, reach out and uh, see if you are interested. You can sign up for it and the information would be coming out later to, to industry so uh, people can, can sign up for this evaluation and be, uh, possibly attend some of our meetings um, and gain um, insight into using this um, expert system. So thank you very much. Um, here are some of the references that I, have, I used um, in the presentation and I'll welcome any uh, questions if there are. Thank you, Peter. So it doesn't seem like we have any questions, um, but Peter, thank you again for presenting today. And uh, thank you very much for having me. We want to thank everybody for attending.